Welcome back, everybody. Here to your coverage of the D2CL. I'm Toby One. I'm your host for the English live stream today. As we're going into our second half of our second series. Don't worry, there is a lot more Dota coming up as we have our third series. Well, that was four. Third, third series coming up. The conclusion of this one, where we had the VG Gaming potential line going up against eHome, and then later on tonight, the ESL one will also be streamed out. So make sure you watch that for that one over on our other channels. You can check all out all of that kind of stuff over on joindota.com. Everything is available for your viewing pleasure right over there. Uh, everything, like literally everything, all tournaments, everything is over there. So go check it out. Uh, into the game we go. So uh, VG Gaming, open up. They believe Lion is Five worth the first pickup. While uh, Sniper still in the pool. Ehome can pick up a nice little combo here. Reserve time. Whatever they want, whatever the heart desires. They are able to go for it. VG Gaming also took a crap ton of time. FY uh, burnt through a little bit of his reserve time, uh, banding out. Would you believe the Troll Warlord? The first band he wasn't 100% wasn't certain of when they launched. Uh, so it's Troll Warlord as well as the Shadow Fiend, Storm Spirit, and Bat Rider. Black all these jump Sniper. heroes. Yeah. It's so obvious that they'll be picking VG up a sniper. I'm really surprised oh, FY was happy VG to give it to them. Turn to Especially after what that sniper did to them in the last game. When you get the clockwork to start with. You've taken out all of your initiators from VG Gaming. At least, uh, well, I should, no, wait for the tie to be banned out right now, so Ice 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 will st still not get his hero. Ten seconds remaining. I don't see Ehome having any real problems with going up against that Phoenix. Five seconds <clears throat> remaining. He didn't achieve anything in that game. He, he tried to come in multiple banned. times for the sprites. Yeah, they didn't kill him uh, from the start, but he didn't achieve anything in the lane. And then normally you go, well, okay, don't worry. If you don't achieve anything in the lane, normally you find levels and then you do something with your abilities later on. Uh, and that didn't happen Ten either. Seconds remaining. And there's that tide ban out. In fact, VG it's going to be, yep, yeah, Ehome. Turn to ban. They just try and limit all the options of Ice Ice Ice. Make sure that offlane is going to be absolutely crap. Um, means ROTK can shine even harder as that clockwork. And even Flame gets to do his sniper Ten job again. Remaining. Uh, VG Gaming, <laughs> at least trying to ban out that Witch Doctor. Five seconds remaining. The Witch Doctor, even without thinking about him being the counter to the Wiss Tiny, was still really effective Reserve in game time. number one. Primarily because he was really on top of getting stun into Malediction. Every single time. And then when Lana was like, right, hang on, I think there's even a slight chance for me to kill this guy solo, or with a little bit of help, he dropped down the Death Ward. At the, at the end of that combination. Didn't care if it was just one hero. Didn't care if it was a support or a core. Either way, all they were looking to do is keep the advantage going the way of Ehome. So I liked the most about that lineup. The fact they also didn't just hold back and say, oh, we should be defending our tier 3 tower when that Wiz Tiny is going to push in through top. It's a really bad idea to, to, to go high ground. No, they said, yeah. we've got this. We're so far ahead. We don't want to give them time to play the game of catch-up. Because potentially, if they waited it out, they would have found up a little bit more. And Wisp and Tiny could still find themselves with a kill combo. Wisp relocate in, only take a little bit, like, one Observer Wall, which they don't see. A good setup. And VG Gaming remaining. would have been straight back in. Not fully into that game, but back into the driving seat. That's what happened when they kill remaining. off uh, the Darks here as well. They just thought, Reserve you know what, time. if that happens again... This game isn't as in the bag as we thought it was going to be. Alright, so Earthshaker was the last ban out by VG. They're worried about the sniper combo. It's just the rotation to mid. I say combo, it's just a successful rotation with an Earthshaker that can make that hero work so much better. So, final ban out from E-Home in the second phase. It's going to be the Lycan. Mm. Radiant team pick. I suppose that would be one way they could VG manipulate the Dire side. To pick. Hmm. Wouldn't have been a bad game for a Lycan. I don't think there's any, any game which you could really say is a bad game for a Lycan. There's, like, there's no proper direct counter up against him. Another hero that could close the distance between himself as well as Sniper. Oh, uh, Radiant team uh, we're going to West Tiny. We are going to West Tiny. The Witch Doctor was banned out. 
So it could have been a, a semi-flag that this was coming. Uh, right now... Hmm... Ten seconds remaining. I'm wondering what else E-Home thinks they could do up against this. Disruptor? Five He's still in the pool. Remaining. That'll be fine. Great up against Queen of Pain. A little bit fragile up against Lion, but... Reserve time. They also would have to be a little bit more cautious about where they're able to find their farm. It'll be it'll be a great hero up against the combo. That's if they do that, because this feels too obvious to be a whist tiny. Disruptor. Uh, e home's still gonna be picking it up just in case. Gaming's it's almost like this pick. time where I would expect something like a Zven to arrive instead of the tiny, and then just like surprise. Tiny. Now they're gonna go standard. All right. Radiant no surprise. Bomb. It's standard. Disruptor VS. And the Wiz Tiny Queen of Pain. Still a large amount of burst damage, but they need to get the lanes to work for them. Wiz Tiny did not get the upper hand up against the Sniper previously. VG the Witch Gaming Doctor made a big difference bad. with that, however. Like a big, big difference with that. But Disruptor can just come in, throw one Thunder Strike and a couple attacks into the Wisp. And if they can control the 100 100 rune, make sure Wisp is oh. incapable of getting that. Then, Radiant good luck. Team pick. The bruise is the final ban out by Ehome. They don't have any great clearance up against that, so fair enough. Well, it's time to. Uh, <laughs> it's, like it's time to duel. Do I get the Legion Commander? No. Actually, she'll be nice up against the sniper. Problem will be the vent. The still the disruptor. Ten seconds remaining. Until Five she got a BKB, it wouldn't remaining. work. Uh, Brist, uh, Bristol could work with VG. Reserve time. In fact, I almost would prefer to see that, but I think Queen of Pound get will be too destroyed in the mid. Uh, you could run like a safe flying tiny with a lion support. Uh, put the co-op in the mid, and then run a wisp Bristol back off lane. Ten seconds remaining. It's quite a it's quite a stable lane. You'd have to still see what Ehome's going to be Five selecting as their final remaining. core. This is their number one role they're going to select now. Viper. And it's a Viper. Hmm. Vici Gaming's turn to pick. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want the Bristol back there. Slow down with VS and Disrupt. Oh man, who the hell are you even running that off lane? Hey, you can't even... Like, you can't have an escape mechanism that requires a change in positioning. Like, Bounty Hunter is the only thing which I think you could even attempt remaining. to do, but then you get dust and you'll die. Uh, you're going to get glimpsed or you're going to get Five slowed? Seconds remaining. That's kind of what I'm looking at right now. So who do you run on this offlane that can deal with that? Timbersaur is, was another hero I was flagging before because it's one of Ice Ice Ice's signature heroes. Uh, in this game, Zeus. it will be pretty damn difficult. And they're going to go back to the Zeus. Ow. Zeus isn't really that effective up against a Viper. Good up against Disruptor and Eventual Spirit, but. And they did win a game with the Zeus previously. But, yeah. I, I'm not liking the chances for Zeus to survive in this game. I really feel like they're going to get uh, Snap back. And then any, any of their damage output. Like, Disruptor and Eventual Spirit will have some trouble staying alive. I. I have no problem with that at all. Like, I think the, these two guys getting picked off, DDC and Lanham, they're going to have to be really on top of their positioning. But the Sniper's going to have a brilliant lane in mid. The Ten Viper will not get controlled on the safe lane. The Clockwork might have a couple of problems seconds because he's still going up against the safe lane Queen of Pain. But beyond that, everything's fine. By the way, guys, uh, I know a couple of guys are actually asking for the HUD to be changed. This is our D2CL HUD. Uh, they're the sponsors of the battle. tournament, hence uh, we have our D2CL HUD being displayed. You can get this. You can also get the Skyward Face set, which is pretty pimp. If you just buy the ticket inside the game. Very easy to find. So, uh, the quick run again. FY9, they did this previously. 
Except last time they were doing it to get the ward up on the high ground here. This time around, they're doing it to put a, a more of a defensive ward. I'll also flag too that in their earlier game, the VG Gaming played, where they ran this uh, Zeus on the off lane. They put one Observer Ward here, and they put another one... Actually, I think it's a little bit further up. It was about here. So they just blocked up the camp so there was no pull potential. This time around, that's not happening again. 30 seconds Instead, they're going to gonna space up their Observer Wards a little bit more. In fact, where is our second one? It's over on the line right now. So still not planted. A very aggressive ward coming up from E-Home. Back behind the tower. Then again, a very defensive one coming up from VG. They're expecting the aggro trial lane. So the 100-100 rune battle begins. And who's going to be coming out on top? And, okay, so Viper gets the one the on the bottom. Begins. And the one up on the top will go the way of the sniper. So you don't get your Wisp instant in bottle into the mid. He's only got the two tangos. E-Home are able to claim both runes. And only had to commit, what, one shrapnel charge and a couple of heroes to have a look around. That's all that was required. For those who have also only just joined us, this is our two-game series, E-Home vs. VG Gaming. It's the way the D2CL is run. There are no best of threes, just the two-game series. Uh, we will have best of threes and best of fives, though, when we get to the playoffs. <laughs> but for now, it's all about getting into the, into the, the groups and the seedings. Getting through the groups and getting the seating. Ah. But there's a reason why we don't have the number one and number two up there. I have requested it. I requested a Valve to have uh, a two-game series option inside the game, but they've only got the best of three. Now, if you do the best of three, it kind of looks a little off. I don't know if that's the reason why it's not used, but because it, it flags a best of a best of three inside the game. Well, it's. Ice 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 is not happy. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I don't think he... Like, okay, he, he got level 2 on the bottom lane. I think that's, that he should be very happy. One minute in, that he's up at level 2. I'm assuming gun means something else. <laughs> uh, it doesn't actually mean that little pew pew thing that Sniper is wielding in mid. Ice 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 now coming to the mid. DDC, there's no toss back. Super couldn't get close enough and Inflames keeps pounding into him. It's only uh, one Denied. and one. That's why he's managed to level up, but. Ice, ice, ice. So he's just coming over to do the pull. So he'll do the pull, try and contest with the two minute rune. Observe ward down by Lanham. Dyer's top tower so he'll see everything attack. going on there. He's not even going to do the pull. He wants the rune. Alright, we'll see who's got more. Lanham or Ice, ice, ice. Ice, ice just sitting on top of the rune spot, Ooh. and he gets the illusion as well. He may even have enough damage. If he had the movement speed, which he sort of does, but he doesn't have the positioning because the disruptor's coming in, uh, he could have potentially killed off Lana. It would have been very deep into enemy territory. And in Flames try to be such a douche. This time around, VG's being a lot more aggressive. Into the mid with their fire as well as Super. And Super's not getting zoned out as badly as he was before. But they're not controlling the Sniper. Sniper has still gone 10-7. In Flames Deny is looking absolutely fantastic. And this Viper is uncontested, really. 16-6 for him. The Zeus is 5 for 0, but obviously he's all about your burst damage. While up on top lane, Hal at 12 for 4, the, the highest CS of VG Gaming. And this is a lane where ROTK has managed to find 3.5 levels. With Rockets, he's searching for the last hits. Okay, he's going to cog. How? Blinking himself in. He doesn't have enough mana for the screen, but they've got enough physical damage to now be the first blood. That's a big one to claim. It goes into the hands of Fenrir. But VG Gaming needed a good start to this, because their other two lanes are not looking terrific at all. This time around, we do see Super changing up that build. I kind of got a feeling that Super misclicked in, in the first series today. Uh, in the first game, when they played the Tiny. Because he went for the two points Avalanche then. Just had the two points toss. So yeah, I'm almost certain that that was a misclick before. This time he's doing it the right way around, so the two points up in the toss. It's easier to spam damage at that enemy mid. Okay, 
So bottom lane, Viper. As he headed over to Ice Ice Ice, and he's looking for a sand, uh, for a Sage's mask. A little bit more. He's range for the experience. And Viper doesn't see this. It's obviously uh, fog of war during nighttime. So he's just able to lead some levels. But this Viper's almost level six. If he gets a Viper Strike on the Zeus, then Zeus should die. Tether into the mid, they're gonna go for Inflame. Avalanche and Toss, not actually picking up Inflame. And with the Shrapnels down, Super can't stand here. FY wants to. He's got only one more Spirit Ball left. He has to bail out. The Rocket was coming in from the Clockwork, trying to help out with the last hit. The Tiny was pretty damn low. And FY has to commit the last of his Bottle Charges to bring Super back up again. Nice Ice Ice is also not a very healthy man. Do it with flare. Got some mana, but not, not a lot of HP in the tank. The Viper's gonna do that do the mech build, no surprise. And Flames finishing up his face boots. Still very open for how he wants to do this, but more than likely we're looking at a mask of madness. That was his choice in the last game. With it, he was even able to get solo kills over on Super's Tiny. Just kited them out. Top lane again. ROTK. It's going to be a twofer. That Shadow Strike's going to tick him. Fenrir almost stole that last hit. If he de he seminally delayed his attack then. The animation stopped for a brief moment. Uh, still 2-0. to zero. As ROTK feeds more golden experience over to VG Gaming. Overall, Ehome is still ahead. Let's just look at the kill moments. Experience doesn't change that much. The gold definitely does after it. Because there's just no, no presence on top. No presence on top. ROTK will return. TP in the mid is going to be super in FY. Just switching up the bottle charges. Making sure they make the most out of these TPs. And the six minute rune's already been taken. Where are they going to head? It's how with that double damage. Critway's pushing un uh, uh, underneath the tower. So potentially both Howe as well as Fenrir could die for this. But it's just so obvious if they do it. They'll see it coming from a mile away. Like the blink. Okay, there is actually the stun. With the scream and the physical DPS from Howe. It's enough to find the kill. Fenrir is dead. Underneath the tower. Lana will get a revenge kill. And rotation from DDC. This is really problematic for Hal. He's about to blink himself away to safety. Where is this vision? It's, it's a level two glimpse. And uh, Hal's blink range is more than enough to get out, or is it? It is. Switched over to strength treads and just tanks up the assassination. Goes straight back to middle lane to do what he wanted to. Keep super as low level as he possibly can and give him no items whatsoever. The wall is up. Oh, super. He's trapped inside this one. Shrapnel's still available. Tossing just a couple of these creeps back. Surprised him. Flame didn't try and commit to that. I know the Thunderstrike's only level one, but... A little bit of shrapnel. Can go a long way. ROTK. A little bit of trouble, but Lanham is still here. Sonic Wave going to connect on both of them. The Magic Missile stuns over on Fenrir. And, uh, well, nice double stun from Fenrir. Picks up the double kill. Backed himself right into the corner of those cogs. And with no battery... Well, actually, the battery assault was there. I owe you one. My eyes didn't exactly see who it was connecting on. It wasn't reaching the creeps. Yeah, it was all on, it was all on Lion. So VG Gaming. Off to a fantastic start as far as kills go. If you bring up the net worth, however, you're still going to see a lock up in the way of the sniper. As well as that Viper. How's the mech looking? He's got the headdress recipe. Looks like we've got a load Dyer's of extra uh, stuff on the side as well. That's going to be for his Ring of Aquila. Super. Rocket was coming in from the sniper. They're baiting in flame up. Super still solo. The magic missile will find the kill. So Lanham again, this is the second time he's had to clean up for one of his cores in the lane. Well, yes, it is a one-for-one -one trade off. It is the two cores in the mid. Sniper's still worth more because he's going a complete solo, not this combo lane in mid. Tani's also not getting any any of the experience for these kills. 
It's just bleeding into the supports. And while in some ways it's good, the fact that Lanham is able to find these levels, so he's got Swap available now. It would have been nicer if you did see it over in the Disruptor. Because Disruptor wants to have his level 6. If he can find the control with that level 6, he's looking fantastic. Those then players like Ice 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 have no answer. These Soul Ring builds also keep you so low in life. So until he gets his Tranquils and then into what I would assume to be a Yule Scepter. Dyer's middle tower it's not going to be the prettiest attack. picture for Ice Ice Ice. Uh, it is going to be Tranquils. No surprise. That's what you do when you get your Soul Ring. Prince coming up north. Actually building now into the Buckler. Quite a good good transition for the for, not transition uh, momentum for the Viper. It's not really making the most out of it though. Like Ice 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 isn't giving him the opportunity. Fenrir is hoping that he uh, that he does because then you got your finger of death, and that's just gonna rip apart. I'll, I'll just I'll just destroy anyone who comes to that lane. That Mask of Man is coming in from Inflame as well. Oop. Not finding enough CS for it. Four heroes coming to the bottom. They do see Zeus. Lions left the trees in the meantime. And they do have the TPs available. It's a five hero commitment from Ehome to come to this bottom lane. And in fact, they're already bailing out of here. As fast back as they possibly can. How will get some chip damage up on the top. And even the damage into mid, maybe Tani could get close enough for a toss onto it. The Zeus ulti goes off and they, yeah. VG Gaming are fully aware of what Ehome are trying to plan. Bottom tower is they beat attack. into that bottom tower. It will be a T1 tower attack. dropping. In, uh, it looks like ROTK is even looking for the kill on Ice Ice Ice. But what, what's your trade off? The top T1 tower is going to drop Radiant's as well. You've lost T1 tower on bottom. Fallen. Your tier two tower, uh, your tier one tower in mid is down to one one quarter of its life. Well, glimpse come on back over, FY. Spirit balls hitting pretty hard into inflame. He's going to relocate himself out to safety. He's not properly inside the base, however, so he can't actually heal here. Nice finger of death into Lana, but super the battery assault from RTK keeps him controlled. And with the blink in from Hal, at least gets a quick revenge and puts himself in a good position for FY to just tether away to safety. Are they going to keep going? Yeah, you bet you're nailing. <laughs> now gets himself a double kill. Now a thousand gold away Radiant's from having his Aghanim Scepter. And we're only 12 minutes in. Close, but not quite. There's even more luck coming his way. With the regeneration rune, he could just blink Sonic Wave. Shadow Strike. Ah, Fenry doesn't have enough of, of a uh, follow-up. So he'll just blink Scream instead. And TP back to base. All right. All right, so where are we off to next? It's been a low kill count. But at the same time, VG Gaming are just playing this passive. They know they want to wait out until the perfect timing. Queen of Pain with a, with a buffed up ultimate. The Zeus able to lend his Thunder God's Wrath. And the Tiny, well, he went the Bracer. We did see this again from Super previously, and then he went into the, uh, the Aghanim Scepter. A lot of this will still also depend on the timing for the kills. Where can VG Game even catch out Ehome? Because I still question that. The fact that Ventral Spirit got such an early level, then you've got her with a swap, high level stun, and the two auras, both the negative armor as well as as well as the vengeance. So with these things up, an ROTK having almost level eight. You got so many different ways that the super can get caught out that having an Aghanim Scepter, those stats will not be enough to keep him alive. The Wisp has to do the primary job, and he's tr still trying to build into a mech. So, a smoke move movement by VG Gaming. Looking to catch out Ehome in the mid. Queen of Pain's in a nice spot for a Sonic Wave. To potentially blow that Vengeful Spirit to hell. I don't think she can get it all in one shot, though, but it will still be quite impressive to see.
Well, oh, that's annoying for Hal. Oh, that's really annoying for Hal. Whoops. I heard TK try to guess the direction of the blink. Obviously, Queen of Pain just gives a level of uh, visual indication about where she's going. Getting the perfect accuracy for a hook Dyer's shot. It's not that accurate. The T1 tower is going to drop in mid. e -Home able to claim that one. While Super's keeping this push going as hard as he possibly can on the bottom. The TP's already going to come in to stop him. From inside the trees. The one from Viper was just exposed enough that uh, the Wisp and Tani backed up fairly early. Alright, VG. They waited so long for that. I say so long, it was 30 seconds, but 30 seconds of tiny farming time is a hell of a long time. They want to catch him as he went shopping. Nice, nice, nice. Didn't, didn't have anything to lend. His soaring was on cooldown. So he didn't have the ability just to trigger it and go for the ulti. Still needs to find more farm on this uh, Zeus, or at least just more intel items. I don't care if it's a four staff. In fact, actually, I do care if it's a four staff. It should be a four staff. They need to get their teammates out of those clockwork cogs. And there's not, there's no other item which is going to do it. And there's very few of these heroes that would even purchase one. I'm going to relocate. We're going top. Up. VS with the early stun. Catching an FY, but the damage was already done. The Wiz kills off the sniper. Now they just need a little bit more of an attack to kill off Lana, but the Viper's has arrived. Relocate. Gonna pull him back in just a moment. Oh no! Oh, okay, Tiny. So Tiny drops. He only had that. Uh, well, he was storing up a crap ton of money, so a lot of unreliable gold. The reliable gold's actually sitting up there at 320. So, yeah. That's a total loss. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So it pushes the Tani back even Dyer's further as far as Zagnum Scepter goes. Looks like Dyer's bottom lane, they're having a little bit more fun. How's gonna let the ulti go? He'll kill off RTK. We're trying to defend that tier one tower. But the trade-off's also gonna be there. Assassination, Tani needs to get the avalanche. Okay, nice stun from Ice Ice Ice. He's stopping again. Wish to die, but Ice Ice Ice. I, that, that was not worth it for Sniper. That sniper was sitting at level 11. And Zeus just got all of that experience solo. Not to mention he's running ahead of Midas again on this offlaner. I, I don't... Yeah, this, this is now the second time in the series where we've seen E-Home just be a little too aggressive. Where the traders make a hell of a lot of sense. Sniper at least still has spent his money. So he's got the Mask of Madness. And you see that most of it's also reliable gold. So very little unreliable gold lost. And it's the experience gaining. And, and the gold given to VG Gaming. Obviously not away from the hero, but still to VG Gaming. That's the problem. Now moving through their items, however. So we've got Nagan and Scepter coming up for Viper. After it's already completed up the mech. We've got Vengeful Spirit with just a... Belt currently, but more than likely, and S and Y, if he feels the desire. No, what I'm talking about. No, uh, treads. Not S and Y. Wrong, wrong name. Uh, treads to build up on the ventral spirit. We we'll probably need a little bit more life points than what he what he has here. So look for another bracer, at least to deal with that finger of death coming out from the lion. And ROTK still working into that blade mail of his. But only 200 gold away from finishing the job. Under attack. Boom, oh. there it goes. Tier 2 tower stays numbered. Viper is not the greatest pushing hero for this. The rock is trying to keep Dyer's back the push on the top lane. Now uh, Super has got this wonderful thing called Toss. Wonderful, wonderful thing called Toss. He's not using it. Could shift down that tower a lot lower. Zeus throws out the ultimate, trying to give a little bit of extra vision to VG Gaming, know who they're up against. And already, relocate in. RTK can't hook shot up. FY just gets plonked right on top of the clockwork. Well, Cobb takes out the Vengeful Spirit, so there's the supports. Well, one support, one core goes down. 
And the Wisp and Tunny head back up to their top lane battle. They probably would have enjoyed having more of uh Radiance bottom tower is okay. under attack. Radiance well, I was gonna say VG Gaming would have enjoyed probably more support coming down from eHome to give space up on that top lane. But then the problem with MB, you have defenders for the tier 1 tower, but the tier 1 tower was so low that a plink in from Howie just tanked it up and finished the job. Alright, so where's the opening from eHome? This disruptor still needs to play a part. Right, the glimpse kill for top. Oh, like. Kill off the tiny. Now that was nicely done. That was one real moment. Still haven't seen a, a really effective static storm. It might also be because VG Gaming aren't really giving them the openings to do it. When they come in and they kill, uh, and they fight, they kill you almost instantly. Right, so is it Roche time? Uh, not until- well, Tiny does have the Aghanim Scepter. But not until he's got a little bit of armor or a better attack speed. Oh, we're relocating. Back up to the top lane, they're looking for ROTK again. Tossing in FY so he can get in front. He does have the haste rune. So that'll block him up a little bit. Hawk shot down. Super just cleaves him apart. The Wisp will go down. And Super, where are you headed? He doesn't want to run up north. He's going to move back into the tree lines. The Shrapnel and the Wave of Terror give more the vision required. An inflame, oh no assassination, but with a swap back from Lanham. Ensures the kill. <laughs> Whoops! Ah! Uh, the inflame took a lot of damage from that because he turned on the Mask of Madness. But he killed the disruptor with the final toss back, tiny. <laughs> so technically it's a two for two trade-off. There's no experience really coming in for VG Gaming. Because when the disruptor died, uh, there was no one there. They didn't gain anywhere near as much experience as, as eHome. Not to mention Ehome are behind in the experience, gra in experience graph, which means there's even less coming in for you during these team fights or ganks, like we just saw. At least a day of agonims for these two heroes, Viper as well as Quop. Quop able to push out the lane so much faster. Not to mention it is it is a half decent buff. With a 40 second cooldown for your ultimate, that's kind of what most players buy it for. It allows you to defend from your high ground without, any, without too much trouble. The damage increase is also not too bad. It's up by 60, which isn't terrific, but it could be worse. There's Tiny's Flash Farm. 1900. He goes up in the bank account. Home. Started a little bit of a clap from VG Gaming. That was Zeus searching for him, but uh, because they don't see everyone, they realize it's a smoke gank. And VG Gaming grouped themselves up a lot tighter together. Still spaced out enough that you couldn't get caught out by uh, Disruptor, Wall, Glimpse, Salty, or a hookshot for two heroes. And E Home realized that it failed. After Thunder God's Wrath went out, they knew it, they knew it had failed. Didn't have to waste any kind of time. Clockwork, where's that hookshot line? Get the range for it. Yeah, he does. Up he slides. Wonderful four stuff though from Fenrir. I should know that was Ice Ice Ice. He's gonna get dragged back in again. The assassination and Zeus is dead. There's more support coming in from the Queen of Paint. Large amount of damage into Inflame, but the ult, the ulti from Disruptor, almost a non-factor. Super's already got himself a double kill. They're actually gonna take a quad kill in favor of VG Gaming while Lanham will TP out in the tree line. So you just lost Zeus. Ehome committed pretty heavily to make sure he was going to go down as well. But how? He did the biggest thing for that fight. He found the sniper. And not only did he find the sniper, he killed the sniper. And that's the downside about running a hero like a sniper. You must have distance. Radiance you must have space to make that hero work. Radiant structures are fortified. But he ends up losing his life. And now a space for VG Gaming. Especially space for Super, who can buy his full BKB. That's that wave of terror. DDC wants to get the glimpse. Looking for the TP out. How? Most exposed. That glimpse would only drag him back down to this area. And in fact, he's not even going to get in range for it. It's a level 4 glimpse, so that range is quite big. But the rest of VG Gaming about out of here. 
They don't want to borrow it. They got their BKB over on the Tiny with the Aghanim Scepter. Still need the attack speed, but that's okay. Thunder God's Wrath being used once again to, to check out where they are. And to reveal the fact that Lanham put an Observer Ward up on top of the cliffside. So VG even knows the vision. Blink, how is he going to BKB walk out? He actually blinked over so he could pick up the BKB from the courier that was coming in. Then he got glimpsed back and then triggered the BKB. But it was just a fraction of a second too late to do it before the glimpse was done. I don't know if he would have really needed... I don't think he would have really needed to have the BKB, but it's just a safety thing more than anything else. How's this Wisp and Tani doing again? Farm, 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 farm. They're at the top top of the net worth. Considering Sniper and Viper were pretty much dominating that, they're doing well. The Zeus is actually a factor in this game. Kind of felt like Ice 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 would just drop off the face of the earth, but that ulti always being used for scouting just helps with the positioning for the rest of his team. He's got a four staff as well as a Midas, so he's always catching up in farm, as well as experience. And the four staff lets him get free of the clockwork if he gets initiated on. Or potentially outrun e -home. There's that ulti again. It only just came off cooldown. But it lets him know. That's a good little observer ward. I have a sentry here for it. Sentry's been purchased up by Vengeful Spirit. Are they gonna smoke? Oh wow. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. It's a disaster. So he's supposed to smoke in private. Away from the eyes of the viewing world. And lungs of small children. RTK's moving up. They have no vision. Or do they? Yeah, they do. Observer on top of the cliffside. Four stuff out from Fenrir. Gonna get glimpsed a long way back, but still got the sun over on the clockwork, which means Hal can just turn the ulti on. Get a little bit of spill damage over towards the Viper. While Super and FY, they're chasing down this damn Dwarven Sniper again. With a toss up and the cleave, the swing. Got the ding on the Disruptor. Now for the Viper as well. Avalanche toss in one second time. Yes, he's just pulling Hal down to try and follow with the stun. Zeus already managed to find this kill. TPing out to safety, he knows that's going to tick him out if he doesn't get back to the fountain regeneration. And Lanham's going to get cleaned up. Triple kill for Super. And GG, it's the call from RTK. Waste not, want not. As far as the time for these two teams, Ehome will call the GG and VG Gaming will end their D2CL day with a 2-1, oh sorry, a, a 3-1 result. Not a bad start to the day. Ehome aren't done yet. Make sure you don't turn off your live stream. Ehome will be playing another game where they go up against the other version of Virtus of Ver Virtus, Virtus Gaming. Of uh, VG Gaming. It's VG Gaming Potential who will be playing up their next series. So far, in their run, it hasn't been terrific. They're 0 for 4. Maybe they can win one game. They're up against Ehome, so uh, let's see what happens. We'll have ourselves a break and be back here in roughly three minutes. I say roughly, three minutes is the official starting time, and we're never going to start in three minutes. This is Dota, what am I talking about? We'll be back. <laughs>